Hello everybody! In this video we're going to write a third version of our alternating function, this time making use of a very famous Python library called NumPy. Um, so NumPy should remind you a lot of MATLAB and what we've been doing the past couple of weeks um, in Math 9, so um, hopefully it's uh, kind of exciting to see an old friend. Um, and I'd say there's two main parts to getting started with using NumPy. So the main thing is making sure that it's already installed on your computer. So it is an external library. You will need to make sure it's installed. Uh, we have a separate video for that. So in this video, I'm not going to show you how to install it. Um, so be sure to check out that video or reach out for help um, if you need it. But otherwise, let's assume it's installed. I'm going to show you the second step, which is how to import it. So what we're going to do is I'm going to use the word import. Then I'm going to type numpy and I could just run this cell and it would work just fine. Um, but I'm going to type the word as and then the letters NP. So what this is going to do is now every time I want to use something from numpy, instead of having to type out numpy, I can just write NP. Another thing too is I didn't just come up with NP. I didn't just make it up. This is a convention and one that we absolutely should follow. So any code that you read is going to import NumPy as NP. Um, so for readability and just to follow best practices, always call it MP. Um, most libraries that you see in Math 9 and Math 10 are going to have standard conventions for naming. Uh, and you just kind of pick them up as you learn them. So here's your first one. Just keep in mind N NP for NumPy. So I'm going to run the cell. Now, because NumPy is installed on this computer for me, there's no error here. If you run this cell and have an error, it means that NumPy is not installed. So be sure to check out the video or come uh, reach out to me or your TA for help. But otherwise, okay, looking good. So NumPy is installed. Um, let's see some examples of how this is similar to MATLAB. So I could say something like NP.zeros. Now remember in MATLAB, this would create an array of zeros. So here I'm going to say, let's make a three by five. And I can see here, I get, yep, a three by five array of zeros. Now, what's the data type of this? Let's save a to np.zeros of three comma five. And what I can do now is I can say, well, what's the type of a? And you can see here, so it's a numpy nd array. So you should think of this as standing for n dimensional array. And in this case, we have two dimensions. We have the row dimension and the column dimension. Um, but you could have more dimensions and we'll, we'll see examples of that later in the course. Um, other things that we could do is, let's just, because we'll use it in our function, so let's see what happens if I do np.zeros of, let's just say, seven for instance. And notice here, so this gives one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so it gives a one by seven row vector. I believe in MATLAB there's a little bit of a difference. If I call just zeros of sevens, I believe that gives us a square matrix. So just a subtle difference to be aware of. And one thing too that I want to kind of draw your attention to is notice that kind of we have these decimal points kind of here. So I could do something like np.zeros. So let's have it here. So np.zeros of seven. I could extract the first element of this list, so here it's 0, 0.0, and I could ask, well, what's the type of this? And we can see here that the elements stored in our array are num uh, NumPy floating point uh, numbers. So the 64 here represents the precision, so 64 bit. The float here means just a real number, so not necessarily an integer. Um, and just to keep it consistent with our old videos, remember our alternating function, we wanted just integers. Let me show you how we can kind of get these numbers to be, to be integers and not have the decimal point. So let's do help of, and I'm going to do np.zeros without the parentheses after. And I can see here, there's a parameter. So see, I have shape, so integer or tuple of integers. Um, I have the D type, so data type. Um, so notice here I have numpy.int8, whereas the default is numpy.float64. So let's try getting this to work. So I'm going to say np.zeros. Let's keep it 7 just for the example. Now I'm going to say dtype equals np.int. Let's do a 64-bit integer. And we can see here now, notice the decimal point is gone. 
And that's just because I specified that the data type should be integers. All right, so I've shown you how to make this array of zeros, how to change from the floating points to the uh, integers. So now let's kind of put some of this into a function. So we still want to create that alternating function. So let's try it out. I'm going to have def, so definition, let's call it alt three of n. So same so far. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a to be np dot zeros of n. And now let's specify the dtype. So I'm going to say dtype equals np.int64. And let's just pause here and say return a and make sure that everything is working how we expect. So I'm going to run this cell. And now let's try running alt three of five, let's say. So you can see here, I get one, two, three, four, five. Notice we get this numpy array as our output. So not a list, but a numpy array, but we can see entry wise, it's doing what we want. So something cool that we can do is similar to in MATLAB, if I said, okay, take this and add three to every entry, notice here it adds three to everything. So what I could do is I could come up here and say, okay, take the zeros, turn them all into three. So just add three to everything. So we're very comfortable with this from our MATLAB unit, but I want to show you, like if I have something called my list and let's say it's zero, zero, zero. And then if I try something like my list plus three, this is going to give an error. So again, this NumPy library is very similar to MATLAB. It has a lot of very nice um, kind of array vectorized operations. So um, just a nice thing to notice that it doesn't work with list, but it does work with our NumPy arrays. So, okay, let's go back to our function. Maybe I'll copy paste it below so that we don't have to look at the error. All right, so what this has done so far, again, let's run it again so I can show you. If I do Alt three of four, this should return a length four array where every entry is three. So, yep, one, two, three, four. Now what we need to do is we need to change the odd entries to be sevens, right? So let's try it out. What we can do is we can say, okay, let's go back to our function. Take A, start at the first uh, index. So remember zero, one gives us the first odd index. Go all the way to the end, but count by twos. And what I can do is say, well, I want this to be equal to seven. So I'm gonna save it. And now let's run all three of four. Oops, did I run it? There it goes. So we have three, seven, three, seven. I can try it again with maybe five. So alt three of five. I get three, seven, three, seven, three. So looking good. And we see here we have this nice slicing. Um, this is another example of where if I wanted to try this with a list, it wouldn't work how I expect. So again, remember my list is zero, zero, zero. If I tried something like, or maybe even, let me make a little bit longer of a list. So I'm gonna redo this and say, well, my list is equal to three, one, four, one, five, nine, let's say. And then let's say, okay, let's look at my list and let's say start at the beginning, go to the end, but go up by two. And we can see here, um, we get three, then we skip to four, then to five, so we get three, four, five. But now notice, what if I tried to set this equal to negative 17? So very similar to what we did up here. So what's happening is that the same slicing assignment that we did on the NumPy array doesn't work for a list. If I wanted this to work for a list, what I would need to do is say my list, so I'll do start at the beginning, go to the end, count by twos, equals, and I know it has three entries, so I'd need to do negative 17, comma, negative 17, comma, negative 17. And now this would work, so if I look at my list, I see that these get replaced. But the issue is uh, I needed to know that there were exactly three elements that needed to be replaced. And if I even just remove one of them, I'm going to get an error. So I really need to know that there's exactly three. So um, with lists, this is like a very, uh, cumbersome way of changing elements, but for our alt3 function when we were using a numpy array, this slicing method worked very nicely. So 
I think this is a good place to end the video. In the next video, we're going to talk about timing uh, these different strategies to see which one is the fastest. And uh, I'll see you there. Thanks for watching.